Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all Denarians on the go and in the know. Please hit the like subscribe button and share with your fellow Denarian friends to help support our channel. Believe me it makes a huge difference and is very much appreciated. I thank you. Be sure to check out our sponsor, the Currency Exchange Planner, voted the number one pre and post RV planning tool for the Denar community. Created by a Denarian, for Denarians, to ensure your exchange goes smoothly and for mapping out all your future financial goals and assets. Use the promo code, the Denarian, and get 25% off along with the newly upgraded mobile application added free for my subscribers. A preview of both the mobile application and the desktop planner is made available on the website for your convenience. I am also recommending you register as an affiliate today with the Carrot Bar Gold Savings Program, the gold program made for the financially challenged as I like to call it. It makes saving physical gold easy and affordable for everyone, one gram at a time. Now is the time to get involved if you have not already done so. Both the links to the currency exchange planner as well as the carrot bar gold savings program are in the description box below. Always remember, knowledge is power, using that knowledge is powerful. First article of interest for today. Report. Iraq allegedly helping Iran skirt U.S. sanctions. The documents from Al Arabiya revealed that the Iraqi Central Bank has been pushing private banks in Iraq, whom have Iranian board members, to open credit accounts in U.S. dollars. Leaked documents have indicated that Iraq may be helping Iran defy U.S. sanctions, according to a report released by the Saudi news outlet Al Arabiya presented by the Middle East Media Research Institute. Memory. The report noted that following the death of former IRGC Quds Force Commander Qasem Soleimani earlier this month is a U.S. strike. Iraq has become increasingly concerned with the United States placing sanctions on Baghdad. The documents from Al Arabiya revealed that the Iraqi Central Bank has been pushing private banks in Iraq to open credit accounts in U.S. dollars for the purpose importing oil derivatives to meet local needs, including for gas, oil gasoline, diesel, white oil, and liquid gas. The boards of these private entities include individuals connected to Iran, such as businessmen who have ties to the Islamic Republic. It shows that Iran has been exporting its oil derivatives to Iraq, at a price backed by the Central Bank of Iraq, and is profiting from the bank's daily auction of hard currency by employing middlemen to convert Iraqi dinars into dollars, the report notes which further adds that the funds are later transferred out of Iraq via private exchange offices and banks. Some of the banks involved in the violation of U.S. sanctions include the Alaf Islamic Bank, al Bilad Islamic Bank and Iraqi Union Bank, some of whom have been sanctioned previously by Washington for having dealings with Iran and Hezbollah. Next article of interest, the President of the Republic heads to Italy to meet the Pope at the Vatican. Today, Friday. President of the Republic Barim Saleh left for Italy to meet the Pope at the Vatican. The Presidency of the Republic stated in a statement, Tomorrow Press received a copy of it, that, on his way back from the Davos conference, Barim Saleh went to Italy on a short visit to meet His Holiness the Pope at the Vatican to discuss the region and the world's need for peace and harmony, in addition to an agenda for a visit His Holiness the upcoming Pope of Iraq. Next article of interest. Saleh, the Iraqis insist on a full, non-violating, sovereign state. The President of the Republic Barim Saleh tweeted on his account in Twitter, in conjunction with the demonstration that started this morning and calling for the exit of foreign forces from the country. Saleh said in the tweet, The Iraqis insist on a sovereign state that is not violated, serving its people and expressing their independent national will, away from interference and dictates from abroad a state that guarantees their security and rights in a free and decent life, a state in security and peace with its neighbors. Next article of interest. Governing the coin. World Economic Forum announces Global Consortium for Digital Currency Governance. Following extensive consultation with the global community, the World Economic Forum announced today the Global Consortium for Digital Currency Governance. Digital currencies are often cited as a tool for financial inclusion, 
but this opportunity can be realized only when paired with good governance. This is the first initiative to bring together leading companies, financial institutions, government representatives, technical experts, academics, international organizations, NGOs and members of the forum's communities on a global level. To tackle the challenge ahead, an international, multi-stakeholder approach with the public and private sectors working alongside civil society is needed. This consortium will focus on solutions for a fragmented regulatory system. Efficiency, speed, interoperability, inclusivity and transparency will be at the heart of this initiative. It will call for innovative regulatory approaches to achieve these goals and build trust. A set of guiding principles will be co-designed to support public and private actors exploring the opportunities that digital currencies present. Digital currency, a cross-cutting topic that requires input across sectors, functions, and geographies, is a key area of interest for the forum, said Klaus Schwab, founder and executive chairman of the World Economic Forum. Building on our long history of public-private cooperation, we hope that hosting this consortium will catalyze the conversations necessary to inform a robust framework of governance for global digital currencies. Any evaluation of digital currencies should consider both policy and business objectives, as well as the unique circumstances that face different economies around the world, in order to fully evaluate their risks and benefits, said Lester Ganyago governor of the South African Reserve Bank. Bringing together diverse perspectives through this consortium will allow for this holistic review. In order to achieve this, we need the public and private sector to collaborate. While digital currencies offer wide possibilities, these have to be assessed against the fundamental objectives of economic advancement and shared prosperity, said Patrick Gujin George, governor of the Central Bank of Kenya. Global governance of the diverse initiatives provides greater assurance of this outcome. Governance is the core pillar of any form of digital currency, said Mark Carney, governor of the Bank of England. It is critical that any framework on digital currencies ensures security, efficiency and legitimacy of payments while ensuring fair and open competition. We welcome the World Economic Forum's platform to help develop a robust governance framework for inclusion through digital currencies. We are exploring the potential that properly regulated digital currencies hold for cheaper and faster cross-border payments, financial inclusion, and rooting out illicit finance, said Tharman Shan Mugaratnam, Senior Minister and Chairman, Monetary Authority of Singapore. This dialogue between public and private sector players is now essential, so we find the right roles for each in realizing this potential. We are watching closely as digital currencies increasingly become an area of focus around the world, said Eric Parado, chief economist, Inter-American Development Bank. They may unlock new opportunities for efficiency and inclusion, but this can only happen with the appropriate infrastructure and guardrails. The release of digital currencies will have far-reaching implications, from domestic financial stability to international trade, said Rania A. Al-Mashat, Minister of International Cooperation, Egypt. As such, it is imperative that efforts to regulate digital currencies are well-informed, collaborative, and global in nature. Building on our collaboration around the World Economic Forum's Central Bank Digital Currency Toolkit, we are eager to continue exploring the pillars of well-informed approaches to digital currency through this consortium, said Rashid al governor of the Central Bank of Bahrain. Having witnessed first-hand technology leapfrog East and West African financial markets forward over the last decade, we are excited that this initiative will bring leaders from around the world to share best practices and will work on truly global policy recommendations, said Elizabeth Rossiello. Chief Executive Officer of AZA Finance. We welcome the dialogue the World Economic Forum is facilitating about digital currencies, said David Marcus, head of Calibra, Facebook, Libra board member. We agree that good regulation is important for the success and safe adoption of digital currency platforms and are looking forward to continue to engage in this constructive conversation. Digital currencies have the potential to improve access to financial markets, 
but proper oversight and governance are required, said Rob Hayat, founder and managing partner of Motive Partners. The World Economic Forum is uniquely placed to bring together the private and public sectors to discuss these issues and tackle the challenges ahead. Digital currencies are a tremendous opportunity to make the financial system more accessible and fair, said Neha Nerula, Director, Digital Currency Initiative, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT. Creating an inclusive, integrated global digital currency system requires dialogue across stakeholders ranging from finance ministers to open source developers. And the World Economic Forum is in an ideal position to facilitate this important conversation. Trust is needed in this space now more than ever, said Joseph Thompson, Chief Executive Officer of Aid Colon Tech. Creating new economic opportunities and a paradigm shift in how technology is used can benefit all societies. What we need now is multi-stakeholder cooperation that is anchored in principles of social justice. It's rare that such an important global organization takes into consideration the context of developing countries and the application of fourth industrial revolution technology to achieve this, said Maria Antonia Arroyo, principal of the Ignite Impact Fund. Stablecoin is an important development that, if properly implemented and responsible to the concerns of civil society, will be effective at universal financial inclusion. New technologies, like blockchain, have helped catalyze a revolution in the mechanics of money, said Joseph Lubin, founder of Consensys. We applaud the efforts by the WEF in actively researching digital currencies, including those that are blockchain-based, as a means to foster innovation but also ensure that central banks can maintain their role as stewards of the economy. The future of money is digital and central banks and the public sector have a crucial part to play in ensuring that this future is sustainable, inclusive and positive for society. This initiative builds on work done by the Forum over the past year, convening a global community of central banks to co-design a policy framework for the adoption of digital currencies. The Forum's Global Technology Governance Summit will take place in San Francisco from 21st to 22nd April. Governance of digital currency will be a core pillar. Go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button to be alerted as more articles of interest unfold. Be sure to visit my Denarian blog for all of today's articles of interest and find me on Facebook as I also post them on there as well. Take a moment and visit our sponsor, the Currency Exchange Planner, voted the number one exchange planner made by a Denarian for Denarians. Use the promo code. The Denarian to get 25% off at checkout along with the mobile application added free for being my subscriber. Register today as an affiliate with the Gold Savings Carrot Bar program. If you do not keep your savings in a real asset like gold, you risk everything as the fiat system fails. Protect your family's wealth today in physical gold, as tomorrow may be delayed. This program is made so even low income people can buy gold by offering it one gram at a time, which makes it affordable to everyone. Get involved today, it's free to register and secure your family's savings tomorrow. You can always turn gold into any kind of fiat money you want or need later, the gold will always be in your possession not the banks who do not care about your well-being. Above all the gold will retain its purchasing power in good times as well as bad, the dollar will not. Ask yourself this. Why are all the central banks loading up on gold lately, and running from the current depreciating fiat US dollar? Do you think they do not know what is coming? Get yourself protected today, before it's too late. Both of the links to these invaluable programs are available in the description box below this video, go check them out, knowledge is power, over and out, the Denarian.